Welcome to this presentation, where we will explore the effects of spontaneous breathing efforts on the lung and diaphragm for patients receiving mechanical ventilation. During normal patient effort or breathing, the diaphragm contracts, which generates negative pressure within the pleural cavity to inflate the lungs. This normal breathing pattern is interrupted when patients are on controlled or assisted mechanical ventilation. Instead, the mechanical ventilator applies positive pressure to the airway to force the lungs to inflate. Depending on the patient's respiratory drive and desired tidal volume, there may be little or no participation from the diaphragm in inflating the lungs. The total stress exerted on the lungs can be calculated by looking at the difference between the positive airway pressure and pleural pressure, which is the transpulmonary pressure. This reflects lung inflation both by the ventilator and the diaphragm's contraction. At some point, patients will start breathing spontaneously when receiving mechanical ventilation. Spontaneous breathing during mechanical ventilation has both risks and benefits. In terms of risks, if respiratory efforts are excessively vigorous, this may cause injury to the lung and diaphragm. Excessive respiratory efforts can result from pain, anxiety, delirium, inadequate ventilatory assistance, and dyspnea when receiving assisted mechanical ventilation. These excessive efforts can cause patient self-inflicted lung injuries and load-induced diaphragm injury. In terms of benefits, it helps to minimize atelectasis, improves oxygenation, lowers pulmonary vascular resistance, and may help to mitigate disused diaphragm atrophy. There are four potential contributors to patient self-inflicted lung injury during spontaneous breathing. The first being excessive global lung stress, which occurs when patient respiratory efforts increase tidal volume and transpulmonary pressure above safe limits for patient-supported breaths. Next is excessive regional lung stress, which occurs for injured lungs that are collapsed and consolidated. Examples include mechanical stress and strain, which can lead to uneven redistribution of air during inflation, which increases the positive airway pressure. Next is the pendulift effect, which are inspiratory efforts that generate large transpulmonary pressure swings in dorsal consolidated regions, causing air to move from non-dependent to dependent regions, therefore increasing lung stretch in dependent areas. Thirdly is transvascular pressure and pulmonary edema. During spontaneous breathing, Negative pleural pressure generated by respiratory effort lowers alveolar pressure and increases the hydrostatic pressure gradient from the lung interstitium to the alveoli, increasing total lung water and pulmonary edema. Lastly are asynchronies. Patient ventilator asynchronies can cause an increase in tidal volume and transpulmonary pressure, which can lead to lung injury as a result of the pendulum effect during vigorous patient efforts. Types of asynchronies include double triggering, which is double mechanical breaths from a single inspiratory effort, and reverse triggering, which are diaphragm contractions triggered by passive thoracic insufflation in passively ventilated patients. Overall, it is desirable to allow patients to have spontaneous efforts, but it is important to monitor and maintain respiratory efforts within safe ranges to avoid these risks to the lung. This slide illustrates the pendulum effect, an effort-dependent phenomenon that only occurs if spontaneous efforts are vigorous, not during small and minimal efforts. When a patient spontaneously breathes, the dorsal diaphragm contracts more than the ventral region, generating more inflation at the back of the lung. Normally, these inflationary forces are redistributed evenly throughout the lung during inflation. However, when there is significant atelectasis and consolidation, the inflationary forces are concentrated in the dorsal lung regions and do not redistribute evenly, causing air to be drawn from the front to the back of the lungs, creating the pendulum effect. 
This implies that the dorsal lung region is overinflated and potentially injured by spontaneous breathing efforts. It is important to note that this probably only occurs when spontaneous respiratory efforts are significantly elevated. During normal spontaneous breathing, the diaphragm muscle contracts and generates negative pressure in the pleural cavity to help expand the lungs and draw in air. When patients are on mechanical ventilation and have excessive spontaneous breathing efforts, this can cause lung injury and diaphragm injury, which is also called myotrauma. On the other hand, when patients have insufficient respiratory effort, this can cause diaphragm atrophy. The four main potential contributors to mild trauma include excessive unloading. This is when there's overassistance from mechanical ventilation and suppression of the respiratory drive through sedation, leading to acute disuse atrophy and diaphragm weakness. The effects of diaphragm unloading by mechanical ventilation through controlled and assistive modes of ventilation can be seen during the first 48 hours. Next is excessive concentric loading. This is when the diaphragm is sensitive to excessive respiratory load. Potential causes include inspiratory patient effort, dyssynchronies, and underassistance due to insufficient levels of support. As a result, this could lead to vigorous concentric contractions in the diaphragm, leading to increased muscular tension. This could then lead to muscle inflammation, proteolysis, myofibrillar damage, and sarcoloma disarray. Next is eccentric loading. This is when the diaphragm muscle generates contraction while lengthening instead of during shortening. Examples of when this occurs includes when there is low peep and excessive low tidal volume, causing the diaphragm to contract as it lengthens during expiratory phase to avoid atelectasis. And there's also dyssynchrony, such as reverse triggering, short cycling, and ineffective effort, causing eccentric contractions to be generated because the diaphragm is activated during expiratory phase, which could cause acute diaphragm weakness. Lastly is excessive PEEP. Excessive PEEP may cause sarcomeres to drop out of the muscle and shorten its length. In summary, there are risks and benefits associated with patient spontaneous breathing efforts when receiving mechanical ventilation. In terms of risk, it can cause patient self-inflicted lung injury and load-induced diaphragm injury while benefits include minimizing atelectasis, improving oxygenation, lowering pulmonary vascular resistance, and mitigating disuse diaphragm atrophy. It is important to note that lung and diaphragm protective ventilation is a novel approach that has the potential to enhance clinical outcomes for critically ill patients. Therefore, it is critical to assess and regulate the patient's respiratory effort to maximize the patient ventilator interaction and minimize its negative consequences. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this presentation.